Hi, I'm Amy with I Meditate the World, and today I'm going to show you how to create this painting. This is a mantra painting, and it partners with our Soham Mantra Meditation on YouTube that you can find. So for this painting, I'm going to show you some techniques um, with adding some texture. We're going to create two lotus flowers, and then you are going to choose a mantra that you want to have on the bottom. So I have two variations that I will show you in the tutorial. So there's, there's that one, and then this is a different mantra. So as we're doing the tutorial, you can choose what you would like to have on your painting. So let's get started. For this tutorial, you will need two bottles with a needle tip, so you can put some white paint and some burgundy paint in it. You'll need some texture paste, acrylic paint with the colors black, teal, tan, and burgundy. You'll need a thick brush, and you'll need some materials to make some um, designs in your texture. So a comb, just a circular object, and whatever else you can find. So we're going to start with our blank canvas. This is the fun part, this is the best part, and you're just going to get some paint on your canvas. So get that teal paint and just cover your canvas with paint. Enjoy how it feels with the paint flowing on your canvas. Then you're going to take that texture paste and what you're going to do is you're going to create um, the stems of your two lotus flowers. You're going to kind of create the shape that you want those stems to follow. So for me I want them to go one kind of aiming to the upper left corner and one to the upper right corner. So that's going to be the background of where you will paint those stems. And then from there, you're just going to play around with this texture and add it in to um, create different designs. You can kind of decide where you want those designs to be, but for me, I still want to follow those two lines where the stem of the flower will be, so you want to still create that circular motion. Then I'm going to use a knife to smooth out that corner. And with the texture, however it looks now is how it will look dry, so you can just play around with it until you get the designs or lines that you like. I sprinkled some dirt on to the texture. It'll just add um, a nice feel to it. Also the fact that the painting will have the lotus flower on it. The lotus symbolizes having your roots in mud but still growing to be this beautiful flower. So that's why I wanted to use the dirt to kind of go with that theme, to use the part of the earth in that painting. So now where you see the empty spaces, you can add in some more of the texture paste so that we can add in some designs on there as well. We're kind of going for um, an abstract background. Okay, then I love using a comb when I'm doing texture, so you just use your comb and add in the lines where you want them to be. If you don't like it, just use your finger to wipe it out and try again. Then use a circular object and you can just push into that texture paste to create some different designs. I did a couple, I think I did three in the bottom left and then I'll do a three on the top right hand side, some in the bottom right hand corner. You don't want them to be too even, kind of sporadic. It's still looking aesthetic and still maybe following the rule of thirds a little bit. 
Then I decided to add a little more dirt to the texture paste. It'll give it a nice kind of grainy, rough looking background. Then when I'm doing texture, I love to add quite a bit of that paste to the corners. Kind of brings it all together, centers everything on the inside. Then you can play around with your knife and kind of drag some of the paste across. I'm going to add in some, I'm going to etch in some lines on the bottom. I'm going to add another few brushes with the comb. When you're creating your designs and your texture, just Follow intuitively where you think the design should be. Don't worry too much about doing it exactly how I'm doing it or making sure it's in the right spot. Just play with it. So you let that dry probably overnight or take a hair dryer to it. And then you're going to take your black paint. And you're going to cover the bottom. Don't worry about completely covering with the black. That's the fun part of the textures. Now we're going to have different colors peeking through. So there you can see that I didn't paint all the way through. I wanted some of that teal to be peeking through. Then I'm going to go in with my tan color or beige and I'm going to add that color next and kind of blend it together with the black. Maybe go over some of the black with it. And the reason we started with the black on the bottom is I think it's very symbolic of the painting. It's the lotus flowers are blooming, they're emerging from the mud, from the darkness and kind of as we get up within our painting where it's reflective of your spiritual journey, your enlightenment. So knowing that no matter what kind of darkness you have faced or no matter what has happened in your journey, you can always come into the light, you can always, you can always grow. And then I'm just going to use that teal again on the top. I used a little bit of a lighter shade to go on top. just wanted to brighten up the painting a little. But you can use that darker teal if it's up to you. So now I'm going to go in with that teal and I'm going to bring some of that down to the bottom just very lightly, just a little bit of paint on the brush. And you're going to kind of just create these different layers and you'll have some of the colors peeking through and we call it dry brushing where you have just a very little bit of brush on your paint. And you make sure it's quite dry, you can blot some off on a paper towel and you just bring some brush strokes up or down. So you'll bring some of the tan down, you'll bring some of the teal down, and you'll bring some of that black up, kind of linking together the whole painting. 
And when you're bringing those colors up and down, kind of follow the layout that you have with your texture designs. So if you have a line going in a circular motion, like that line on the right that goes up for the stem of the flower, you're not going to go up with a straight line. So it's just following your intuition and what you think flows. Then you're going to go in with that burgundy and I just use the burgundy to kind of add in some highlighted areas. I'm going to go around all the corners, not too much paint, I'll just put a little bit and then use my fingers to rub some of the paint off so it just leaves a bit of like of a stain kind of. Then you can see it really brings out that texture and the dirt that I put on there. I'm just brushing on a very little bit of that burgundy. And you can see how it created a really nice effect. You can still see the black go quite a bit and you can still see that teal underneath. And just do what feels right, add in some burgundy if you like. So once that's dry, you're going to go in and you're going to draw either one or two lotus flowers. Um, if you did the two lines going up with your texture, you'll do the two. So you can just follow my lead with how to draw the lotus flower there. And I don't even have my petals touching, I want it to look a little bit more on the abstract side. So each lotus flower I always have seven petals there on going up and then the two coming down and then the two stems. You can use chalk probably best so you can wipe it off then you're gonna write a mantra so you can choose any mantra that you want for me I love Sanskrit mantras I love the way that they sound I love the vibration that I feel when I'm saying them so one mantra that I really like is so hum and it means I am that reflective of your connection to everything so you can just google it and pull up what that mantra looks like in Sanskrit it's a very beautiful looking language um, this mantra that I'm doing right now, I found this one as well. It's Bur Buva Hasuvaha. And really, it's just very reflective of rising above the material world, the physical world, the celestial world, and then just inviting in that brilliance and 
finding the brilliance and energy and light you have within you and radiating that out to the world. So with mantras, they're used to center your mind on an intention. Um, sometimes it's simply the sound or the vibration of the mantra that helps you enter into a deep meditation. They can be very rhythmic. The vibration can have a meaning on its own. Or if you just have something you want to set an intention on, it helps helps you to do that. It helps you to stay centered on that intention. Then you're going to use that white paint with the needle tip bottle or you can just use a white thin tipped paintbrush and go over the lotus flower and, and go over the mantra. And then you're going to go in with that burgundy. I used, I added some sparkles to mine. And you're just going to not follow the white lines exactly. You kind of want it to, to double what is underneath, but not follow it exactly. And then you're just going to create some squiggles, make some close together, some long, some short, and follow the stem all the way down. And there you go, there's your mantra painting. So if you would like to try a mantra meditation, just head over to our YouTube channel and we have a meditation that links with this painting.